right to first uh, to uh, 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 first refusal. You know, the box out of Bible two or three, we know that. And the Holy Ghost hit me three times in a row right quick. And then he said this. He said, if you don't grab a hold to an opportunity while it's passing by, it will pass you by. <laughs> It'll pass you by. You got it? And I said, oh, Lord, I, I hear you. I heard the voice of God. Even though it came through a vessel I never saw, never heard his voice. But when he spoke, I heard God speaking to me. And, and so I told my wife, you know, the Lord said, don't, don't let this opportunity pass by. And for me to take advantage of the opportunity during the lifetime of the opportunity because I have the right of first refusal. And I know it's first refusal because when it was presented to me, they said somebody else came up in their mind, but God spoke to them about me. Y'all right, right. got it? Amen. And so uh, my point, God have people stationed along the every every of your life, every, every dispensation of your life, and you got to stay sensitive so you can, you can hear and recognize those people when they show up because they're there. Y'all got it? They are there. Amen? Now listen, some of these people you will have a relationship with. Some of them you won't. And, uh, you know, can I confess? That part right there used to bother me because I used to want to have a relationship with the people that I felt like could pour into my life. Am I helping anybody? And, and I found out that, you know, sometimes God will have people to pour into your life and, and, and you won't even be able to get close to them. You won't be able to get close to them, Right? But you got to be able to recognize, though, even though I can't get as close as I want to, God using that person to speak to me and to minister into, into my life. Y'all got it? You know, I found out that, that, you know, successful people can only have so many people in their inner circle. So many, they, they, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you got it. It came to a point in time where, where the crowd, the people in the crowd couldn't get as close to Jesus without going through the inner circle. They had to find somebody in the inner circle and tell them to go in and ask Jesus could they have an audience. And people get, you know, they get a problem with that. You know, I just can't walk in past the door. I usually can walk in the church and just, and just go in past the office. Well, well you know, sometimes you get to a point where you, cannot, you can't do that no more. That don't mean pastor getting high-minded or looking down his nose. Got Alex out there. He's bigger than the dope. You know, you can't get by. I said that, and Alex knew exactly what I meant, didn't you? I said that in a positive. That was, that was male affirmation. That's, that's what that was. It was we, you knew it. You knew it. You knew it, Denny. You knew it, Denny. You knew it. That was male affirmation. That was not a put down. So don't be rubbing on Alex Beck. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it, Pastor. He didn't. He just say anything. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> he understood exactly. He's saying, yeah, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. No, I am. I ain't. That's all what. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know that's right. That was male affirmation. So, so listen, some people... <laughs> This is God. She, she, she a loving person. It, it, you know, sometimes you don't think I'm as loving. But I am. I am. <laughs> yeah. I had to defend myself because she in the truck. I'd be getting it all with. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. And I'm like, the boy all right. I'm telling you. <laughs> Lord, how mercy. Where am I? We was a far off or a strong close. Yeah. 
All right, so some of them you have, these people, the who's in your life, some of them will have, uh, you have a relationship with and some of them you won't. And, and that's important because perhaps some of you were like me thinking that anybody that God uses to, 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 to bless your life or to give you instructions as it relates to being successful, you always have a relationship with them. You got it. And that's not always the case, and you can't be offended about that. Y'all got it? Uh, listen, some of them will be saved, and some of them won't. Y'all got it? Because one of the things God has had to do, you know, over the years is drop certain biblical wisdom in ungodly vessels. Y'all got it? Because perhaps it may not have been anybody in the kingdom that was ready for it. You got, I believe he does that quite often in, in the area of science and, and medicine and, 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 and inventions and all of that kind of stuff. Y'all, y'all got, because a lot of times, you know, the world will be wiser than the children of, 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 of God because they're always after something, trying to find out something, trying to, I wonder what's down there in that hole. Right, it's dark down there, it's deep down there, throw a rock in there, don't want to hear it hit by I think we ought to go down there, right? <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 right? But somebody going down there, and they're going to find out, they're going to come back, they're going to do a documentary, and they're going to tell you what's down there. The third person, okay, they're going to do the documentary. But, but, but listen, sometimes they'll be saved, and sometimes they won't be saved, right? And you got to be all right with that. You know, sometimes God will teach you some things through an un- unsaved vessel. See, if you know the word, though, you know where they're getting off. Right? But don't not get what you need. Y'all, y'all got it? Amen. Somebody say, get what you need. And I got this. Now, please understand this. They will not be there to do the work that only you are supposed to do in order to make you a success. Y'all, y'all got it? Because some people have that mentality. They think when, when the who show up, they're supposed to do all the work. You got it to make you a success. And who is saying, listen, I've already done that work once. I ain't even do it no more. Right, this is how I did it. And this is what you need to do. And I'll come back and I'll check on you to see whether or not you are doing it correctly. But I'm not going to do it for you. Amen. Y'all got it? And, and you'll be surprised. The more they see you uh, uh, invest yourself, the more they'll be willing to communicate to you. And every now and then they might put their hand in it too and help you do this or to, or to do that. You got it. But you got to invest yourself in your own success. Somebody say it. I have to invest myself in my own success. That was pretty good, right? So Joshua had his father to pour into his life. He had Moses to pour into his life. And he had the Lord to pour into his life. And, of course, the Lord uh, was the most important one of the three. And he will always be the most important person. Uh, that we need to have to pour into our lives. You got it? Uh, you have to be careful about, and I'm closing, about success. Go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, I think in 18, or is it 18 and 8? Let's see. And uh, because what the enemy will try to do when you become successful, I think it's 8 and 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll try, to, he'll try to cause you. And I know this kind of stuff never enters your mind, you know, that when I get stable, when I become successful, that I'm going to forget about God. I'm going to forget about the things of God. And um, sometimes... Success can cause you to become so focused on your success because 
being focused is one of the principles that breeds success, right? A diligent man shall abound with blessings, the Bible says. And so what that means is that when you get after something, you, you focus in on it. You all in. You're not half in. You got it. Amen. You got a direction to your life. You won't be deterred, you know. And so, and, and you got to have that, but you have to be careful that you don't allow that to get out of control. Because you can get so focused on your success or being successful until you forget about God. And, and forgetting about God is not, I just, I just forgot about God. His importance in your life begins to you will begin to wane. Is that is a good way to say that? Yeah, he's not first place no more in your, in your life. You, you got, and that's, that's, that's real subtle, subtle. Yeah, y'all got it. But the enemy has used that, and he continues to use that on those who are not aware of his tactics, right? Deuteronomy 8 and what? And 18. He says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, man. God knows the end from the beginning. Right? I don't care how they say, Lord, Lord, we ain't going to never, and I know that's bad name, we ain't going to never forget about the Lord. Well, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Y'all, 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 y'all got it. And people confess that, they testify that, they say all that kind of stuff. But as soon, sometimes, if they get to that place of stability, and they got it clicking. They got it going on. Man, they start forgetting about the law. They never denied that they were the children of God. Y'all got it. But in their actions, God said, you done forgot about me. You done forgot about me. When you were making minimum wage, I couldn't beat you to church. Now, God was first place in you. In your life. Now they want to take it up to $15 an hour. Ain't the Lord good? That ain't no money. Yeah. Not, not from the perspective of what you want out of life. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be grateful, you know. But I'm just, yeah, right. That You know, $15 an hour, you, you know. And, and, and God said, look, I don't look down. Through time. And, and I decided to warn them about something that he knew they were going to do. Hmm? Verse 18, this is why I am. It says, but thou shalt remember the Lord, thy God. For it is he, oh Lord. Now, remembering the Lord don't mean I remember the Lord. No, that means you get on up, you come to the house of God. You right. You invest yourself in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, in the house of God. Uh, 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 yeah, that's that's what he. That, that don't mean you remember the law. You stop paying your tithe. And you believe in God for more. Right. But he said, "Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is what." Lord, have mercy. That what? That giveth thee the power. You know, see, success will never be by your own might and by your own power. Right? If, if you acquire any degree of success, it's going to be because God gave you the power. That's why I say, I don't understand that. You know, God will give you the power to go to the job, and he won't give you power to come to church. Right, right. Yeah, you done forgot about God. And I'm going to tell you, the way that happens, the more you put God back like that, the easier it becomes to do. The easier it becomes to do. You know, and you need to quit using me as an excuse. Pastor don't know, I'm tired. You probably were tired when you went to work this morning, but you went. Mm, and work. And God gave you the power to do that, right? 
but we'll talk ourselves into, but he ain't got no more strength. God ain't got no more power left. When I clock out, the power done turned off. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Y'all, okay. Say, is he that gives me the power to get wealth, right? That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Y'all got it? So, so a part of your wealth is to help establish God's covenant, you know, in the earth. I, I'm creating a, a, um, a post-cross prayer for you guys. And I'm going to put it to, to some music to it, and you can, we're going to record it if you want it. Amen. You can play it in your, you know, just to get post-prayer praying in you. Believe it. Thanking God for all the things he's made available for you in Christ Jesus. Y'all got it. And at the end of that prayer, as I was kind of wrapping it up the other day, the Lord, and I put in there about believing for all of these things that God, the manifestation of all of these things that God has said he's already given us in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Ghost had me to put in there. Uh, oh. Hi, I'm Co-Pastor Ann Cosby, right now the Word Church, and we would like to invite you to our 2017 Sisters We Must Stand in Women's Conference, which will be held right here in the beautiful city of Orange Beach, Alabama, at the Caree Resort. So I would like to take this time to invite you to come. The dates are September 14th through the 16th, 2017. That's right, so be sure to come and join us. The ladies at Rightly are already making preparation just for you to have a wonderful time in the Lord fellowshipping with other sisters in the Lord. So stay tuned, and our announcer will give you some pics from last year. So be blessed. Ladies, it's that time again. Time for the Sisters We Must Stand Women's Conference 2017. This year's conference will be held once again at the beautiful Caribe the Resort in Orange Beach, Alabama. We invite you to come join us September the 14th through the 16th at the Caribe for our wonderful time in praise, worship, and fellowship. We will have five dynamic speakers that are seeking a word just for you, woman of God. So grab your family and your friends and reserve your condo now. To register for your conference seat, call 251-433-0121 or contact your rightly representative. To receive your conference discount, you must register by August 20th. Sisters, we must stand 2017. See you there. have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with apostle david kaiser jr if you would like an audio or video copy of today's message please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com connect with us daily on facebook twitter youtube or ustream to catch past shows words of encouragement special events or join us live in the sanctuary we're located at 760 Ermira street in mobile alabama our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr. You be blessed. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. 
Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504-569-8205 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Prepare your hearts to experience a life-changing anointing. Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. pastors a ministry that reaches out to those who are bound and ministers healing and deliverance. His dynamic ministry touches the lives of people throughout the nation and international continents. God has placed a sure word of prophecy in his mouth. Welcome to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Let's join the prophet. Hello. This is Prophet Robert Charles Blake Sr. Right here in the city of New Orleans. It is a joy of me, of mine, to be able to come into your homes, or wherever you are, your workplace, or wherever you are, and say good morning or good evening. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I do thank God today for this blessed privilege that we share with you. I thank God. I love you so much. And that my heart is that I share Jesus with a dying world, with a sick, with a sick and a troubled world. I take the privilege sharing the master I love you just that much and I know he's the answer to all of life problems irregardless to what they are Christ Jesus is the answer now I want you to come go with me into the sanctuary that may be a word in there in season for you come and go with me into the sanctuary. Remember that I love you. I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes this morning uh, from the book of uh, Nehemiah. I just like to speak to you for a few minutes this morning from the book of Nehemiah. Dr. Caesar Clark would call it Nehemiah. Yeah. I said Nehemiah. Hallelujah. In this second chapter of Nehemiah, you find the the basics for our meditation uh, this morning. And uh, beginning at the 16th verse, I'd like to do some expository preaching this morning. And the rulers knew not, that's the 16th verse, whether I went or what I did, neither did, neither, neither had uh, I yet, as yet told it to the Jew, nor to the priests. 
you know, nor to the moguls, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Something that God ordered you to do is not to be publicized. For there are times that Jesus said to his disciples, tell this to no man until after I am risen. Don't tell it. There are visions that God will give you for you to not to tell it or share it with anybody. You ought to keep it to yourself. Nehemiah was using a whole lot of strategy because he knew he had to strategize to build a temple. Because the enemy was against the temple. And uh, whenever anybody is against the house of the Lord, they are against the people of God. Nehemiah was a very smart individual. Very, very smart. He knew that uh, there were some things that had to be kept between him and God. Some things are just not to be revealed to anybody, not until the appointed time. You must always keep that in mind. He, uh, he was brought back to Jerusalem after having heard the uh, devastated news of the walls being torn down. And um, he, his heart struck sorrow for and um, he asked for letters to go back to Jerusalem to build. Yes, yes. Now it's hard enough to build, but when you got to rebuild, some of us need rebuilding. Our walls, our walls are down. And they, they need rebuilding. The walls of praise. The walls of loving God again. The walls of brotherhood. The walls of stewardship need to be rebuilt. Nehemiah, I love him because his book is a book of service. If you want to know uh, the true essence of the book of Nehemiah, read it and you'll find out it's a book of service. Many people don't want to serve. Uh, they find it belittling to serve. But service is an exalted thing. One cannot be belittled because he served. A service exalts a nation. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. 
Nehemiah, the book of service. And uh, he, he went back to Jerusalem to work. A lot of preachers, a lot of ministers feel like that uh, work is off limits for them. I don't need to work. I'm a preacher. I don't know who you think you are. I don't know who you think you are. You don't work. The Bible says neither should you eat. You ain't got no business having a seat at the table if you're not a worker. One thing we're going to have to learn, and that is this, uh, to serve God, you got to keep a praise spirit. I see too many sad looking faces, looking all sad and all down and out. I don't care what have happened to you. When you come into the house of the Lord, you ought to be ready to shout to the rooftop. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. You don't look that good. Don't none of us look that good. Hallelujah. Look all right, but you don't look that good. Be sitting up in here looking like somebody want to see you. Don't nobody want to see you. If people got any sense at all, they come here to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Nehemiah, Nehemiah had to have letters of authority. First of all, he needed a letter to cross the river. It was a river he had to cross. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to do a work for God, you're going to have to be ready to cross the river. See River means crossing over. See, going over. And sometimes you got to go over you to get to what God wants you to do. Hallelujah, somebody. Go over. Go over your important attitude. And realize that you're not that important. realize that it's more it's more it's better to to serve than to be served hallelujah if you want to be if you want to be great let him be your servant want to be chief let him be your servant some of us don't even open our mouths to let the Lord know that I appreciate being here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ain't no way in the world I can come into an atmosphere like this and sit here looking all cute and everything. All quiet. Your mouth all twisted and everything. Open your juicy mouth and let the devil know I'm here to praise. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why are you coming when you said quiet? Why don't you stay home? Stay home if you want to be quiet. Stay in your own bedroom. Don't come out. Stay there. Don't come here. We don't need no quiet person here. We need a noise maker. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that uh, 
17 verse, and then said I unto them, ye see the distress that we are in. You know, how Jerusalem lies waste and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the walls of Jerusalem that we be no more a reproach. Let us build these walls. Good God Almighty. Let us move the reproach from us. Let us, let us build up these walls. Come let us do it. Now, prove that they were not selfish. They was soliciting a help. They didn't take an attitude, I can do it myself. I don't need nobody to do it. But you know, when you're doing the work of God, you don't hinder anybody from doing something. Because you don't know what kind of burden God has laid upon individuals' heart. And when they volunteer to help, or if you're calling for help, receive those who come willingly. So you've got to have a willing heart and a willing spirit. You don't want anybody working with you if their spirit is not right. I, 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 I just want to talk to y'all just for a few minutes. You, 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 don't, you don't need bad spirits to help you to do a good job. If you're going to do a good job, you need a good spirit. A God-like spirit. Hallelujah. Because what? We're doing a job not for Blake's, not for individual, but we're doing a job for God. In order to be a joyful experience, to be able to share with my brother and my sister to come in and let us build together. Because see this thing, oh, we're going to shout. And the shout is not for one person. It's for the whole congregation. Everybody ought to be able to shout together. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I don't like, I don't like some of the spirit I see. You know, you can't work here now. You cannot do this. We don't need you now. No, uh -uh. You're not a part of this. How in the hell should not a, a whoever be not a part of where you got your nerves from? Everybody's a part of the work. Everybody should be a part of the work. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. But come in with the right spirit. Stump your feet and say, yes, Lord, and yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. That's what's wrong now. We got too many bystanders. Too many people standing by to see how it's going to work out. Yeah, instead of getting in there and helping to work out, we're going to see how it's going to work out. I'm going to see how they're going to be able to do this now. Hallelujah. If God is in it, they have no feeling in this thing, baby. If God says yes, it's yes, brother. Whether you like it or not, it's still yes. If God is with it, it's got to succeed.
somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Oh. Got too many excuse makers. I can't do it today. I'm not going today. I'm not there today. You ought to knew that when I hired you. Don't come give me all these excuses. You don't want to do my job? Sit down and let somebody else do it. Somebody else can take your place. You got to always remember this. Anybody can feel your place. But can't nobody feel your disposition. Your position can be filled. But your disposition is who you are. And can't nobody be you but you. I'm, big, I'm not going to beg anybody. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Nehemiah is a book of service. And we've got to get about serving. And stop waiting around for somebody to pat us on the back. All right, sugar. Mm -hmm. I ain't no kissing nobody. You come on and do your job. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Nehemiah knew the walls gonna have to be built. This was not a one man's job. And those who was destined to help in building the wall. They had already been tested through that prior life. Because when you get a bunch of people on there that are unprayerful, they can be more of a hindrance than they can of help. If you want to do a job for God, find a praying person. A sincere heart, a holy desire. I think I need to talk here this morning. Why? We're building something for the kingdom. Nobody gets any glory out of this. All the glory goes upstairs. This is not for you to get glory. This is for upstairs. Heaven's going to get the glory. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Too many babies. Too many little-minded people. Too many selfish people. Too many people want it their way. It's not your way. It's God's way. Hallelujah. And if it's going to be right, it better be God's way. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I hope you heard your words. Today, as we shared with you, arise and build. I hope it was a word in season for you. I hope it fit just what you needed. I hope and pray God. Now you must call us and let us know how you enjoyed the message. Call us now. Let us hear from you. We love you. That's why we're glad to be able to come into your homes or wherever you are and share Jesus with you. Because he's the best thing that we know, that the world know, that the world will ever know, Jesus is the best thing. 
that could happen in your life. And I thank God for it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father God, touch everybody that's watching me right now. Reach out and touch them. Touch their families. Touch their health. Touch them now. In Jesus' name, touch them right now. I reach out, Father. And I lay my hand on them by faith. Right now, I bring healing to their body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You got the right to me. Let me hear from you. Let me hear from you soon. Write to me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me. He has anointed me. Come into your home. Come into your mind, your thinking, your soul come into you and share Jesus I love you you go in peace next week we're going to see you don't forget to call us today burn the lines up call us today let us hear from you everywhere call us today God bless you God keep you are you struggling to keep the deliverance God has released upon your life Call today to order this prophetic message, How to Maintain Your Deliverance. Prophet Blake shares detailed instructions on maintaining deliverance as he exposes the hand of the enemy in the lives of God's children. Order your copy today, 1-800-633-4274 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit a prayer request. Thank you for your support. Robert C. Blake, Senior Prayer Center. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504-569-8205 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Become a covenant partner with Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. Tap into the prophetic anointing upon his life by sowing a monthly seed of $25 or more. All faithful partners will receive a monthly special moments message prepared by Prophet Blake's. Also enjoy your personalized frame photo of the Prophet interceding for his faithful partners in ministry. Thank you for your sowing into the Prophet's life through your love and faithful support. The vision is unfolding as God uses Prophet Blake's to minister healing and deliverance to the nations. Thank you for tuning in to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Robert C. Blake Senior Ministries is supported by faithful covenant partners around the world. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music.
Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Let's look here in the Romans, the fourth chapter. Uh, let's move on a little and we'll, we'll deal with this other. In the fourth chapter of Romans, uh, Verse 3, it says, What saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. Now notice, he believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. This was Abraham. Now when we come over to verse 13, it says, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham and his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now it's not through the law, the old law of works, but through the righteousness of faith. Now come down to verse 16. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is the law. But that also which is the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all. Now it's through grace. See it's, it's through faith. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace. Now he's telling you something here. That the only way you can enter into the grace of God is through faith. Now let me give you the definition. The Lord gave me a grace many years ago. It changed my life in the way that I look at some scriptures and the things that Paul said about grace. He said, grace is my willingness to use my power and my ability on your behalf even though you don't deserve it. Now see, all I'd have heard that grace is unmerited favor, and it is that. We can understand that. That's true. But the, what the Lord said to me, he said, uh, uh, now, if I'd just been in favor of you being saved, if you could figure out a way to save yourself, it wouldn't help you a whole lot, would it? So grace is more than just unmerited favor. He said, grace is my willingness to use my power and my ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. I saw a cartoon not long ago. This man and his wife showed up in heaven and, and is talking to St. Peter. And, and, and there was a throne over there and God sitting on the throne. And, and this, <laughs> his wife was lecturing her husband and said, Now, whatever you do, don't demand what you deserve. <laughs> no, you don't want what you deserve. You want mercy and grace. Grace is God's willingness. Now, here's the way the Lord showed it to me. This was back when, when uh, Jimmy Carter was president. He had made the statement. He said, now, I'm in favor of a certain bill that's before Congress. Now, if they pass the bill and get it to my desk, I'm in favor of it, I will sign it. But I'm not going to get personally involved in lobby for it. And, that, and what the Lord said to me, he used that and said, now, you see, if, if I'd have been willing that the world be saved if they could figure out how to save themselves. See, I'd have been willing. that had been unmerited favor, all right. But he said it wouldn't have helped them if I didn't get personally involved in it. He said, grace is my willingness to get personally involved, to use my power and my ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Now, if you'll take that definition with all the things that Paul said about it, it'll change what the Bible's been saying to you for years. Be strong in grace, Paul said. Be strong in God's willingness. It's not enough just to know that God's able. You've got to be strong in his willingness to do it. Now, watch over here. Come over here to the fifth chapter. Uh, Romans verse 1 and 2 Therefore being justified by faith you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. The only way that you have access into the grace of God is through faith. You can get things through faith you can't get any other way. 
You can't get it through the law. You can't get it by being good. You, I was telling the pastor, I was, <laughs> one day I was, I wasn't doing anything spiritual. I'll tell you what I was really doing. I was up in the top of a tree building a deer stand. I'm just hammering away. And the Spirit of God said, the Lord said to me, He said, what some people call faith is not faith at all. It's just high expectation based on wrong information. I just laid my hammer down. Sit down. I'm going to listen to this sermon. And he went on to say that how that people believe that, well, well now, I believe God will do this because, because I, I, I believe I'm worthy of this. One lady I remember said to Brother Hagin, he was telling a story about it, said, she said, now, I, I just don't understand it. She said, Brother Hagin, can you, can you help me? She said, said uh, uh, and not a better Christian in this church than I am. And said, not a more spiritual person in this church than I am. But she said, now, when it, when it comes to getting healed, uh, come down with sickness or something, said, said, I always end up having to go to the doctor and have an operation. But said, now you take my husband's side of the family. And she said, now we're, I'm faithful to church. I pay my tithes. I do all these things. And I'm always there. And, and said, then, then here's the husband's side of the family. And said, they're not really faithful. They just come now and then. Don't really pay the tithes. They give now and then. Said, but if they ever get sick, they come running to the church. Get hands laid on them. Get healed. Can you tell me why? He said, well, not knowing any more than you said I, I, I would say that they're quick to forgive and not hold a grudge. She said, well, that's exactly right. Said, they just don't let anything bother them. Now me, she said, I'll tell you, I just can't hardly forgive anybody. <laughs> well, she let the cat out of the bag, didn't she? See, she has high expectation based on wrong information. She believes because she's a good Christian, she's the most spiritual person. She thinks she's the most spiritual person in that church. That God will heal her. She believes she merits healing. She's under the law of works. And the Bible says she's under the curse. Yeah, the Bible says that. Now turn with me to it. I, I want you to see it. I think people think I make this stuff up. <laughs> Go over there to Galatians. <clears throat> In Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, <clears throat> and then the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel to Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they that be of faith are blessed by faithful Abraham. For as many as of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. She believed because of her good works she ought to be healed. And this scripture says she's under the curse of the law. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth those things shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed to everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now what we need to realize is that what, what God is saying here through the Apostle Paul, come on over to, to the... Uh, Fifth chapter. <clears throat> Verse 3 says, uh, For I testify again to everyone that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now he's saying if they're going to do part of the law, if they're going to be under the law, you've got to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect to you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law... Talking about the law of works, ye are fallen from grace. In other words, you can't enter into the grace of God. So this woman saying, not a better Christian than his church than I am. She got over into the, the, to the law of works. She believes that she's going to get healed by her good works. She's under the curse, and the Bible says she's fallen from grace. She can't reach grace. 
because it's not a faith. She thinks it's merit. High expectation based on wrong information. Had a man the other day to just tell me, he said, oh, he said, I've got all these hip problems and had a hip replaced and all this. And I know, he says, God's able to heal me if I could just get worthy. I thought, oh, there's the problem right there. There's the problem. And I gathered up a bunch of tapes and books and <laughs> I'm going to give them, get them to him. Because if he'll continue in the Word, it'll set him free. Yeah. See, he doesn't know that Jesus made him worthy. It's by faith that you enter into the grace of God. Faith in the blood of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him with the righteousness of God in him. It's not our righteousness, it's his righteousness, but it's been imputed to us. Now, while we're on that, we're just following the Holy Ghost, that aren't we? You ever wonder why they call a sinner a sinner? It's because he sinned. He's doing just what he does best. And he can't quit. He can't quit. That's why he called him a sinner. Same reason you call a prisoner a prisoner. He's in prison and he can't get out. That's the reason you call him a prisoner. Now see, I was on death row at one time. But they let me out. I was just visiting. <laughs> but a prisoner, he can't get out. A sinner is a sinner because he sins and he can't quit. He has no way out. He needs a Savior. So when we understand the law of faith here, you realize that a sinner is just doing what he does best. And he just can't quit. There's no way to quit. But you get over in the New Testament and John said, I write unto you that you sin not. Now, he's talking to Christians. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And if we confess our sins, you know, John, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, if you get rid of all the un, what happens? You've got righteousness in you through the law of faith. Through the law of faith. And that's the only way you can obtain it. See, some people try to get it through high expectation based on wrong information. The just shall live by faith. It's the law of God. Now, Paul said in Romans 8, he said, The carnal mind's enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You can't believe your head what you can believe with your heart. So the... the the law of God is the law of faith. It is the law of the New, New Testament. And then Paul goes on and turn over there to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter 10, verse 4, Paul said, For Christ is an end of the, for the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That ended the law for righteousness right there. For Moses describeth the righteousness, which is the law that the man that doeth those things shall live by them, but the righteousness which is of faith. Now let me stop there and read you again what we read back over here, lest you've forgotten what we read about it, what it said about Abraham in chapter 4. It said, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now when it says his seed, that includes us because Galatians says... The third chapter, I believe, is the last verse, says, If we be Christ, then are we Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So it's through the righteousness which is a faith. That phrase, the righteousness which is a faith. Now, Paul tells you right here in the 10th chapter, verse 6, For the righteousness which is a faith speaketh on this wise. Now, first he's going to tell you what the righteousness of faith wouldn't say. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep that is to raise Christ again from the dead? Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about 
what people say. You've said it, and I've said it sometime myself. Lord, just come down and touch me. If you'd come down and touch me, I'd get healed. He doesn't have to come down and touch you. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. He's not coming. He's seated at the right hand of the Father until his enemies have made his footstool. He's coming back to receive the church. But he's not coming to personally come to the earth and do something for you. But now watch what Paul says. He first tells you what it wouldn't say. See, Then in verse 8 he tells you what the righteousness which is of faith would say. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. It's as close to you, he says, as getting it in your mouth and speaking it into your heart. Now, isn't that simple? Now, in the 12th chapter of Matthew, you'll find, uh, I, I believe it's, it's 12th chapter of Matthew, or maybe it's either 12th Matthew or, or Luke. Jesus said, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, he brings forth good things. Evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, he brings forth evil things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the core, the center of his being. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In other words, what's in you is going to come out. You can't hide what's on the inside of you. It'll come out. You know, when they had plane crashes and over in the Canary Islands, and uh, the, the recorder in the cockpit recorded what the pilot said when they saw this airplane about to hit them. They used God's name in vain and said, he's going to kill us all. That's what was in their heart. What's in the heart gets in your mouth. And uh, Jesus, in a discourse, you know, he went on to say right there in that, when he was talking about that, he said, for out of the bones of the heart and the mouth speaketh, and he said, a man will give account of every idle word that he speaks in the day of judgment. That means non-working words, words that don't work for you. In other words, you can speak words based on the authority of the word, <coughs> word of God, and it'll work for you. It'll change some situations and circumstances. First thing it'll do is cause faith to come. It'll renew the mind and cause you to begin to think like God thinks. But he said, what saith the righteousness which is of faith says the word is nigh thee, it's in thy mouth and in thy heart. Now see, they knew that when we were going to school, that if you said it with your mouth long enough, you'd... You'd believe it, and it'd, get, it'd become a part of you. You didn't even have to think then. Four times four is 16, you know. You didn't have to sit down and figure it out. It gets in you. It just becomes a part of you. And if the Word is in you, faith is there. Now, here's the point. I want to show you what Paul's talking about. When we talk about people that don't have any faith, uh, lack of faith is just a symptom. It's not the problem. The problem is lack of the Word abiding in them. Because this word is filled with faith. If this word abides in you, faith is there. But you always know where, where people stand when they say, Well, yeah, I know the Bible says that, but now here's what I believe. Or here's what happened to me. See, they've cast out the word. The word's not their final authority. So they go on talking, doubt, and unbelief, and, and all those things. Now, if you notice here, Paul connects this with that, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You believe with your heart. You can't believe with your head what you can believe with your heart. Now, according to these verses, if a sinner came up here and confessed, Jesus is the Lord of my life, when he said that, the devil was the Lord of his life. But because he based his faith on this scripture, and believed it, and proclaimed that Jesus was his Lord, all the demons of hell can't stop him from being born again. And that may be the only scripture he knows. But faith for healing, faith for finances, you've got to have the word concerning finances or healing. So you can be highly developed in one area and have no faith in the other area. Because the word wasn't in you. Your faith will never rise any higher than your confession of the promise of God. Now, when it says it's in your mouth and in your heart, think with me for a minute. We have two sets of ears. We have the outer ear, and we have the inner ear. We also have a middle ear, but the outer ear is for the outer man, the inner ear is for the inner man. That's very simple. Paul said the outward man perisheth, but the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, if you, 
you plug up your ears and your voice will be louder to you. Why? Because Jesus, you know, when Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bring forth good things, for out of the bumps of the heart the mouth speaketh. Then Paul comes along and says, the word is nigh you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. You put those together and you understand that what you speak out of your mouth is picked up by the inner ear and fed directly into the, what the Bible calls the heart. That's the way you plant the seed of the word. Whether it's God's word or whether it's the devil's word, what you speak out of your mouth is planted Amen. in the heart. And the more, now, you know, it, it doesn't happen. You didn't just, don't just say it one time and it becomes a part of you. It's what you say over and over and over. You've heard people say, well, the Lord knows I want to forgive them, but I just can't. How long have you been saying it? Forty years. Worked real good, didn't it? If they'd have said it the other way, they could have what they say. See, they've had what they said for 40 years. It's helped them in bondage. But you just turn that around and say it on the positive side. Word is nigh thee, is in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, when you first heard your voice on a tape recorder, you got embarrassed, didn't you? You said, oh, that's not me. What's the way we've been hearing you all the time? The reason it sound like you to me and not you to you is because first time you ever heard yourself totally with the outer ear. Your voice is picked up by the inner ear, fed directly into what the Bible calls the heart. That's why Jesus said if you had faith as a seed, you would speak it. You would say it. The more you say it, the more you believe it, the more you believe it, the more you say it. Faith cometh by hearing. You speak it to get it in the heart in abundance. Then when it's abundantly in the heart, then you speak things that change situations. <clears throat> you speak words that will change situations. But the first stage of confessing the promise of God is doing very little to change your situation. First of all, it's changing you, changing your attitude, renewing your mind, getting you to think like God thinks. Now remember what God told Joshua. Now, now notice how all these things work together, even in the Old Testament through the New Testament. He told Joshua, he said, let not the book of the law depart out of your mouth. That means keep it in your mouth. Now, that's the word of God they had for that day, see. Keep saying what God said, in other words, that thou mayest observe to do. Now, what's observe mean? It means to sort of see it, doesn't it? In other words, if you speak the word of God, I have given, it's given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men, given to my bosom, I have abundance and no lack. My God has met my need. Thank God I have the wisdom of God. Any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Giveth to all liberally upbraideth not, it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith nothing wavering. He that wavers like a wave, sea driven, the wind tossed. Let not that man think that he'll receive anything of the Lord. Well, when you pray that, believe it. Release your faith in it. Get that on the inside of you. Now, first of all, that is causing you to think like God thinks. Doing very little change your circumstance or situation. But when it gets abundantly in your heart, the more you hear it, the more you believe it. Faith cometh by hearing, right? So that's what Paul said right here in verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Now who's he talking about hearing? He said the word is nigh you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. Did you notice he didn't say it's in your pastor's mouth and in your heart? He said it's in your mouth and in your heart. You believe more what you say than what anyone else says. Now, don't misunderstand me. You get some faith by hearing what your pastor said and certainly gain some knowledge. But if you want to really develop your faith in the specific promises of God, you get those words in your mouth. The more you confess it, the more you'll believe it. Faith comes by hearing. Now, a psychologist will tell you if a person tells a lie long enough, they'll go to believing it. And after a while, they're telling it for the truth. They'll, they'll swear everything in them says it's the truth. Faith cometh by hearing. Now see, Paul said, so then faith cometh by hearing. Faith in God's word comes by hearing the word of God. Now the other end of the spectrum is that if faith in God comes by hearing the word of God, faith in the devil comes by hearing the words of the devil. 
Or faith in the weatherman or faith in the postman would come by hearing what he said. If he did what he, you know, said, I'll be there at 9 o'clock with the, the mail or whatever. Uh, if the weather forecaster would hit it five, six times in a row, you'd have faith in him. That's natural human faith. But the Word of God, you see, when you talk about the Word of God, you get the Word in your mouth and speak it into your heart. The more you say it, the more you believe it. Now, see, the Word is truth. Whether you believe it or not, it is true. God bless you. We do appreciate you joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. I trust you've been blessed by the teaching and how that faith works in your life and how to get it to work for you. I mean, your confession will change your life. Now, we have a tape offer this week, and I'm excited about this offer. It's called The Law of Faith, offer number 2246. 2246, The Law of Faith, two audio cassettes for $10. Now, what do we mean, the law of faith? Paul calls faith law. In Romans, the fifth chapter, here's what Paul said about faith and the law of faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. In other words, Paul is saying, you don't have access into the grace of God except through faith. In other words, you have to come through faith in the blood of Jesus to have access into the promises of God and into the, the blessings of God. Now, the Apostle Paul said all the promises of God are yes and amen. Paul called faith a law in the third chapter. He said, do we then make void the law through faith? He says, God forbid, we establish the law. Now, he's not talking about establishing the law of the old covenant. He's talking about establishing the law of the new covenant. Faith is a law of the new covenant. In other words, under the old law, it was by works of the law, but now it's by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and faith in the covenant of God and the promises of God. So you only enter into it through faith, and that faith comes from the word of God. Now, in this two-tape series, we talk about how that an airplane wing is designed to produce lift. There's no lift on that wing till it's thrust through the air. The same way the human spirit is designed that when you confess the Word of God, say what God said, it creates faith in the heart. And Paul said faith works in the heart, it won't work in the head. He said the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. It's the law of faith. That's tape offer number 22. Forty-six, ten dollars the law of faith. We have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. If you order by MasterCard or Visa, you'll get it much quicker that way. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, the word is working We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. To order the product offered on today's program, send your check or money order to Charles Capps Ministries. Or to place your order on Visa or MasterCard, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel... Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. 
Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. America, drug addiction is plaguing our great country. Every minute of every day, one of our citizens is rushed to the emergency room with a drug overdose. Many will never leave, never see the dawn of a new tomorrow in our great nation. Call Make America Sober Again now, before this disease destroys your family, your friends, your country. If you or someone you know is struggling with a drug or alcohol addiction, make the next minute in your life count. Make America Sober Again is committed to connecting you with someone compassionate and caring to help you right now. Call now and be connected to a treatment center in our network. Call Make America Sober Again now. Call 800-816-1768. That's 800 800- this program is made possible by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Every word is inspired by God. That word inspired means God breathed. God breathed his very essence into every word. Hallelujah. It's a living organism. Hallelujah. And when you take that word, hallelujah, and find it and put it through your eyes so it can get to your heart and put through your ears, listen to it so it can get to your heart. And then guard your heart from everything else that's trying to get to the seed. Constantly focusing on the Word causes it to take root in our heart and eventually produce fruit in our lives. In the Keys to a Fruitful Life series, Creflo Dollar reveals the step-by-step way from the Word of God to receive all God has for you. The Keys to a Fruitful Life series includes three dynamic messages for a love gift of $20 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. This is Changing Your World with Creflo Dollar. Now from the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, here's Pastor Dollar with today's message. Go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. We're right, we're right in the middle of having everything Jesus wants us to have, except we've dethroned Jesus and we've replaced him with what we think is right and wrong based on what a bunch of people do and what a bunch of people say. And one day, you're going to die. And when you open your eyes in a realm that you have not been in, then you go see what you couldn't see when you were in your physical body. That's going to happen one day. Just think ahead a little bit while you're trying to be smart and trying to be deep. Y'all are all the pagans because y'all got a Christmas tree. I, I don't, you know, I just, I just don't think God cares. I, I'm, I'm not having a, I don't have a Christmas tree because I'm pagan. I have a Christmas tree because, you know, as a kid, I enjoyed a tree. We couldn't even afford a real Christmas tree. We had to have a silver tree with a, a little round light changing colors on it. And I, just, I just wanted a tree because we wanted to have fun. It's not because we just a pagan. I just wanted a tree. I don't think God gets concerned about whether or not you have a tree or not in your house. I don't think he's concerned about it because if you got a problem, you having a tree in your house. God dog it, you got to get rid of the one in your yard. You got to get all the trees out the yard out the way. Just stop it. Stop it. Well, you know, brother, you're going to you're going to go to hell because, you know, you got those tattoos and the Bible says that a man ought not to print nothing on his body. 
you're right, the Bible says this. It's in the Old Testament, and since Jesus has come and died, he's delivered us from all of the curses of the law. We still get the blessings, but we don't get none of the curses. And so I just don't think heaven is really wasting any time deciding whether or not you're going to get into heaven because you like writing on your skin more than you writing on paper. I don't think heaven mind. I don't think God care. I don't think God care. Well, you got a Christmas tree in the house. I don't know. Get a toilet and put lights on it. I don't think he cares. There are much more larger issues than tattoos and Christmas trees and meat. Stop it. Well, I'll tell you what, brother. You're going to be in hell by noon. You got that piercing on you. You know... I don't, I don't, I just, just think about it. I just don't, I don't really think Jesus Christ of Nazareth, seated on the right hand of God, Father Almighty, sent up there and saying to the angels, bring me back everybody that got tattoo and piercings. <laughs> Why? We sending them to hell. Over a tattoo, over an earring, over an earring. I, I, I'm influenced by the word. I'm thinking the word. I'm living the word. But I'm going to go to hell because I wrote Something on my arm. <laughs> Stop it. Well, Brother Dollar, am I going to go to hell because I smoke cigarettes? For real? Because we, we're so used for the church. All the church do is condemn people. We just find, we find out what they're doing and condemn them. We forget that when Jesus saved you, that eventually your behavior was going to fall in line. But we just like crucifying folks right where they are. As if you got saved and was perfect the next hour. As if you ain't working on nothing right now. We know you're working on something. You just figured out how to hide it a little bit better than everybody else. I don't think the Holy Ghost cares. Well, the Bible, the Bible says the temple is the, is the, is the, is the temple, the body, the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and you filling it up with smoke. <laughs> is it healthy? Probably not. Is it going to send you to hell? No. Could it cause some issues in life? Yeah, probably. Are you going to hell? No. Could you go to heaven probably quicker? Probably. <laughs> Stop. Stop. This is not the Jesus that we serve. Somebody lied to you about who he is. If you get saved and just believe him and work the system, then all of the influences will change your destination. It'll change your behavior. Give God's seed enough time to grow in a person's life and they'll be all right. I know you want me to sit up here and say, you're going to hell for this, you're going to hell for that. I can't do that no more. Why? Because it ain't true. Because when you get to heaven, you're going to find some smokers that you knew. You're going to find some tattoos all around heaven. You're going to find units all over the place in heaven. You just need to stop all this foolishness and recognize that we have a Savior that has saved us from our sin. And if he can save you from your sin, he can save you from your cigarette. He can save you from your cocaine. He can save you from your addiction if you'll influence yourself with his word. Stop it. Quit putting fear in people. Quit beating people up. Stop it. Give people a shot. Give them a chance before you became the holy police person. <laughs> Stop it. Stop. Everybody gonna be all right. Why? Because they got seed in the ground. And that seed is working, hallelujah. And that seed is maturing, hallelujah. And that seed is changing their thinking. That seed is changing their feelings. That seed is changing their decisions. That seed is changing their actions. That seed is changing their habits. That seed is changing their character. That seed is changing their destination. Shut up and let the seed do the work. Yeah. Well, 
I don't know if I agree with that. Who wants to hang around somebody that's always judging them? You're supposed to be hanging around people, and when they do mess up, remind them who they are. You're the righteousness of God. All is well. Remember, Jesus died for you. He got you. Remember, just because you're behaving this way today, it's not going to be the same tomorrow. The seed's working in you. Grace has already made everything you need available. And when you plant the word of grace, it is going to give harvest to the graces that have been made available for you. Proverbs 20 says this. Look at this. I apologize for staying there so long, but, you know, all this little philosophy talk in church, nobody know what you're saying anyway. You got to bring that thing to the street every now and then. <laughs> up there using all them big words don't nobody understand but you and you don't even understand it because you're using it the wrong way i ain't got time to be playing church no more i ain't got time for no religion playing church religion almost destroyed my life and i'm telling you i'm free and i'm delivered and amen my son now watch what he said here my son attend to my words what out of everything he could have said, give your attention to, he said, give your attention to my word. Give your attention to my word. He didn't say give your attention to prayer. Prayer is important. He didn't say give your attention to singing. Singing is important. He said, give your attention to my words, because that's going to impact everything else you do. Attend to my word. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Attend to my word. Incline thy ears to my sayings. Look what he said. Give attention to your word. How? Listen to it. Wow. Because we know faith comes by hearing, and hearing what? Listen to it. Verse 21. Let them words not depart from your eyes. One gate that entered into a man's heart, ground, is his ears. The other gate that entered into his man, that allows seed to get into your heart, your ground, is your eyes. Don't let the word depart from your eyes. Turn your neighbor and say, don't let the word depart from the, before your eyes. Don't let the word depart from your eyes now. No, 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 watch this. Keep them words in the midst of your ground. How many of you know a harvest can't grow if you keep taking the seed out of the ground? So that's the devil's job. You're going to take the word through your eye gate, through your ear gate. It's going to get into your heart. But he says, now Satan's coming with persecution, tribulation, trouble, cares of the word, anything to try to convince you that what you're believing for is not going to happen until you can say, all right, I don't believe that, and take that word out. And here's what he said, keep. That word keep means to guard that word in the midst of your heart. Guard it against all outside intruders that will try to contradict it. You know what fear is? The very basic definition of fear is to be afraid that what God promised won't come to pass. That's enough to get you to take it out. He said, guard your heart. Why? Why? Why do I, why do I guard my heart? Why do you want me to guard the word that's in my heart? Go to the next verse. For they are life unto those that find them and health to their flesh. You see what he said? He said, guard your heart because those words are life to those that, watch this, find them. In other words, you got to find it. You have to on purpose and intentionally go get that word. It's not sitting there, well, praise the Lord, I believe what pastor preached. Hit me, Jesus, hit me. It's not happening like that. You got to go find it. When you're sick, you got to go find some healing scriptures. When you're in bondage, you got to go find some get out of bondage scripture. When you're broke, you got to go find some finance scriptures. When you're distressed, you got to go find the scripture. Find it. Well, Pastor, I, I, you know, I ain't no preacher like you. Where, where it is? I don't know where the scripture is. Boy, stop. Siri. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Boy, please, you ain't got no excuse in the generation you live in. For them that find it, 
life. He calls the word life to them that find it. The Bible is the only book in the Library of Congress that is alive. It has the very life essence of God in it. Every word, every word is inspired by God. That word inspired means God breathed. God breathed his very essence into every word, hallelujah. It's a living organism, hallelujah. And when you take that word, hallelujah, and find it and put it through your eyes so it can get to your heart and put it through your ears, listen to it, so it can get to your heart and then guard your heart from everything else that's trying to get to the seed. Because what the devil will do is if I can't get you to give up the seed, then I'm going to see if I can put some more contrary seed in there and see if I can choke that word so it won't produce a harvest. I want to see if I can get you worried about something, get you full of care about something, get you stressed out about something, get you worked out, worked over with something, so I can choke that word so you won't get no harvest. So I'll use the life. I'll influence you with life, and it'll choke up that word till you won't even know what's true or not. Guard your heart, for out of it, let's look at the verse 23. Keep the heart with all diligence. Guard it with all diligence. That's that thing over again. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? For out of your heart are the, watch this, issues of life. Another translation says, out of your heart are the forces of life. Here's this translation. I love it. He says, your life comes out of your heart. Your life, the one you live in right now, is a sum total of what came out of your heart. Your life is the harvest of what you allow to get in your heart. That's why you ain't got time to allow somebody's drama to become your emergency. Just because the phone rings doesn't mean you need to pick it up every time it rings. Your life is a sum total of what comes out of your heart. I I'm the kind of guy, when I get focused on something, I don't want to get distracted. So something that may appear like an em emergency, I, I, am, I, am, I am in a Selah moment. And this sila moment is going to produce something that once it comes out of my mouth, going to change people's lives. Amen. I ain't got time to be doing a whole bunch of talking and texting and all that stuff. I ain't got time for all that. So if you one of my folks that call and text me and notice you never get nothing back. <laughs> my wife says rude. And I say, I, I can't interrupt my thought and allow myself to be distracted with somebody else's drama and then mess up what I'm working on. Ken found my phone. He said, here's your phone. I'm like, man, I've been trying to lose that thing for the last two years. <laughs> Guard your heart. Out of it flows your life. Out of it flows your life. What's flowing out your heart? What kind of life is flowing out your heart? Whether you want to admit it or not, your life is a sum total of your heart. And if you don't put guards over your ears and guards over your eyes, and a few moments, guards over your mouth, check it out. You are allowing entrance for seed that will contradict the Word of God in your life, and it will challenge your harvest. Who you hang around can be releasing seeds that's going to challenge your harvest. Your influences. You know, if you look at the news every day, that stuff is going to challenge your harvest. I'm just saying. Guys, if we, do we have the Message Bible? If we have the Message Bible, could you put up Acts 20 and 32 out of the Message Translation? I want to read this before I, I get into what I'm getting ready to show. I got a few minutes to show them this is big, but I had to build this big foundation to show you this because the devil trembles at what I'm about to show you. There it is. Acts 20 verse 32 says, if you can put it on screen so everybody can see it, now I'm turning you over to God our marvelous God, whose gracious word can make you into what he wants you to be and give you everything you could possibly need in this community of holy friends. <laughs> oh, that's good, ain't it, man? Man, praise God. Now, go to, go to Joshua chapter 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. It comes out of your heart. And what comes out of your heart is a result of what comes through your eyes and your ears and your mouth. Well, I'm not perfect at that. Yeah, but you can at least strive towards that way. 
And I'm going to show you what to do just in case some crazy seed then got in your heart. I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. Show you how to believe for a crop failure. <laughs> this book of the law, now I'm referring to the word, shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then, when, when you meditate in that word. So now we're not just talking about coming to church and just hearing a sermon and going home and don't do nothing until the next time you come to church. The word meditate means to ponder. It means to roll over in your mind. It means to think about it and to look at it and to roll over in your mind and to think about it and to look at it. Somebody says, well, how do you know when you've meditated long enough? When you can close your eyes and see yourself with it, you know you've meditated long enough. When you can close your eyes and have an inner image of you possessing what you've been meditating on, you've been meditating it long enough. Somebody says, well, that don't happen. You do it with worry. Worry, all worry is, is a negative form of meditation. And some of you worry so much, you close your eyes and see it happening. Oh, Lord Jesus, I just saw them dead. You, what? <laughs> don't tell me you can't do it. You're already doing it. You just need to do it on the right stuff. Meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. Now, what happens when you do that? Then you shall make, you shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall have good success. Notice you have the authority to cause that to happen. It starts at that first base of influence. All right, now watch this. Isaiah 55. Uh, let me start at verse... Uh, Nine, Isaiah 55, nine. Oh boy, I got one more scripture. This is gonna, this is gonna, we, 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 oh, so the devil is in trouble. All right, we're one, we're, we're two scriptures away from him being in trouble. <laughs> He's packing his bag. So everything you're going through got an expiration date. Amen. And a lot of your trouble is about to expire. You understand? There's no trouble that you're going through that can last always because every trouble, every temptation that comes has an expiration date on it. And I hear the Lord saying that the greatest days that you've ever experienced are about to take place and your expiration for what you're going through right now is about to come due. Praise the Lord. Look at the jar on the jelly. It's expired, honey. It went out in June of 19, or 19, June of 2016, uh, 17. I know, watch this. <laughs> For as the heavens are higher than the earth, is that true? Yes. So are my ways, God said, higher than the this is what he said. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. So if you got your ways from man's ways, you're, 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 you're operating in a way that is lower than God's. He says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Next verse. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and it returneth not hither, but it waters the earth. And it maketh it to bring forth and to bud. Somebody say, that's harvest. <laughs> that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Constantly focusing on the Word causes it to take root in our heart and eventually produce fruit in our lives. In the Keys to a Fruitful Life series, Creflo Dollar reveals the step-by-step -step way from the Word of God to receive all God has for you that the entire kingdom of God depends on God's Word. So any Christian that thinks that now that I'm under grace, I don't need to get in the Word, you are sadly, sadly mistaken. See, the whole purpose in God teaching the Word and getting the Word is so the sower can sow the Word of God and it get in our heart and develop root because the objective is to produce some fruit in your life. The Keys to a Fruitful Life series includes three dynamic messages for a love gift of $20 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Greetings, Pastor Dollar. My name is Quincy. I have a quick question for you. 
Um, and thank you for the opportunity to ask the questions. Um, simply, how would an individual practically grace-based go about choosing a ministry or which leadership that they should serve under? Again, thank you for that opportunity to ask the question. I look forward to hearing back from you. You know, that's a great question. A lot of people don't really understand the importance of being in the right church. You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 6, you know, whatever you're listening to the most, then that's what you're going to serve. If you're listening to the doctrine of sin unto death that came by Adam, then you'll serve that. If you're listening to the doctrine of obedience to faith that came by Jesus, then you're going to serve that. And so I would, I would, first of all, number one, pray. God, lead me to the church you want me to be a part of, a, a church that teaches the Word of God, a church that is grace-based. Because listening, listen, when you go to that church and listening to the wrong thing, that's going to impact your life. And so it's going to be important to, to make sure that those criteria are being met. You know, is this a word church? It, does it teach the word? Uh, is the church God wants me to be at? And is it a grace-based church? Because whatever you listen to the most, that's what you're going to serve. And so I think that's an awesome question. God knows how to lead you to the right place. Uh, I believe that there are grace-based churches all over this country. And, um, you know, do your work, do your homework, and uh, trust the Holy Spirit to help you to get to the place where you need to be. Awesome. Keep those questions coming. The Change Experience is coming to Houston, Texas. Join Creflo and Taffy as they bring you inspiration, teaching, and healing in three first-time-ever change sessions. And in the name of Jesus, it is time for us to stand up and make the difference in this world because we have been given authority by God Almighty. Creflo Dollar will shift the atmosphere at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. and get ready for Pastor Taffy's very powerful radical session at 2 p.m. We can stand tonight and all have significance, all have value in the plan and in the purpose of God. Amen? Amen. A day of revolution, healing, and prayer. The Change Experience in Houston, Texas, Friday, April 20th, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. To hear that kind of message and to know that God has already done everything for me, that's amazing. Friday, April 20th, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. at the Houston Marriott South at Hobby Airport. Register for the Change Experience now at CrefloDollarMinistries.org. You know, sometimes I think about the cost that it takes to stay on television and to continue to minister to people around the world. And yet when I read testimonies like what I'm about to share with you, man, it's worth believing God and and, and putting your faith out there so that this broadcast can continue to minister to people around the world. This is a testimony from Nicole from Kent, Washington. And she writes, I want to say thank you for teaching on grace because I just couldn't seem to break free from guilt and condemnation. Now, because of the grace teachings, I can run my race in confidence of Jesus' finished work. God, that just means everything. And I tell you, Taff and I, we will continue to get on our face. And, and I know you, you, you partners and friends of mine, you'll pray with us. You'll continue to sow financially so that this broadcast can minister to more Nicoles in the world where people can be delivered from condemnation and guilt and they can walk in the race with confidence that God has given them. If I haven't said it enough, let me say it right now. Thank you so much. Every seed you sow, Every prayer you pray, it enables this broadcast to continue to minister to people about Jesus, the gospel, the finished works of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you. May God bless you. And let's get the job done. Together, we can get the job done until this gospel is preached all over this world. Creflo and Taffy Dollar invite you to join them for a time of worship at World Changers Church, New York. The Paradise Theater in Bronx, New York is now home to a World Changers family you can connect with several times a week. If you reside in the New York area and are seeking to strengthen your connection with God, visit World Changers Church, New York. Sunday, 10 a.m., Wednesday, 7 p.m., Saturday, 6 p.m. 
Thank you, partners and friends, for your unyielding commitment and grace-filled generosity. World Changers Church, New York. Understanding grace, empowering change. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it could be, well, become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons, and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could meet around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron, so does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. The purpose of all of God's promises is to make you whole. Gloria Copeland and Billy Brim share how you can experience God's goodness and shalom to you next, right here on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim's back with us today. She's telling us about some things you're going to find exciting. Hallelujah. Glory because they belong to you. That belongs to us. Mm -hmm. As born again children of God, it belongs to us. So we're, we're all ears, Billy. Well, okay, we're studying about shalom. And it is, of course, translated peace. But it's much more than the absence of war in the Bible. That word means whole, complete. Whole and complete. Be complete and be sound. And... Um, so there's a couple of places we're going to read in the Bible where it's used, and you would never guess it just reading the English. So uh, it is spoken of as the temple uh, was completed. Temple, the first King 7 and 51. First Kings 7, 51, it says, no, you can, it's down here, Gloria. Oh, I'll put them all okay. down there. Yeah. <clears throat> so was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. Now that means completed. That, that word right there is shalom. 
It's a form of shalom. It, it is a form that says sound, ended, complete, whole. A form, Good. one of the words that comes from the word shalom. Okay. So it was, it was whole. Now you think about the temple. This is the temple. And there came a place where it says Solomon finished the work and ended, made complete, shalom. Yes. The Holy Ghost is making us. Complete. We are going to be. We are going to be complete as the whole temple of God. The Holy Ghost is building us as a house for His, for His glory, for His presence. But actually, as God sees you in Jesus, He made everything complete for you. It's all done. He doesn't have to do anything else. No, it's been you just finished. have to get it into your life. Bless the Lord. We and in your spirit, it's so right now. But receiving. Just receiving it. Bless the Lord. Ah, uh, speaking about that, nothing left but just receiving it. Uh, get that one right there, the goodness of God. I, wanna, I want to read from this, Gloria. Oh, this blesses me. I wrote this down in my Bible. Uh, David Barron, mm -hmm. who uh, was born in Russia in 1855, and he was brought up in the very best Hebrew schools. Uh, he came, he converted to Christianity. And, uh, but he comments, I love his books because he comments, let's say on the book of Zechariah. That book was a closed book to me until I read his commentary on it because he knows the Hebrews so well. And um, so in, in the uh, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 17, it says, how great is his goodness. Speaking of God, how great is his goodness. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, then he comments, this is, on page two, Gloria, okay. this is um, David Barron's comments on the goodness of God. Goodness is very frequently attributed to God in the Old Testament. As, for instance, in Psalm 31, 19, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that put their trust in thee before the sons of men. They shall utter, and, and Psalm 145, 7, they shall utter the memory of thy great goodness. So he quotes some scriptures, a speech of God's goodness. Now listen to this statement. This is the statement I wrote in my flyleaf of my Bible. Goodness is that attribute of God whereby he loves to communicate. To communicate means give. Mm -hmm. To all who can or will receive it, all good. Yes, Lord. Yea, himself, who is the fullness and universality of good, creator of all good, not in one way, not in one kind of goodness only, but absolute goodness. Yes. Without beginning, mm. without limit, nothing without but measure. This good, his goodness, bestows on all and each according to what? God's goodness? No. no. Our ability to take it, to exactly. receive it. According to the capacity of each to receive it. Nor is there any limit to his giving, save his creature's capacity of receiving. What's, he, what, what's that talking about there, Billy? His goodness. It's talking about your faith to receive yes. it. Exactly. How are you going to receive it, Glow? I'm going to receive it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to believe it. How? By you, faith. You only I take got, it by faith. It, yeah. There is no limit to his giving. Mm -mm. Save his creature's capacity of receiving, which also is a good gift from him. You know, the thing faith is, is a gift. after we begin to learn about faith and how it operates, we found out we'd been blessed already. Exactly. Everything already belonged to us. Exactly, Gloria. The desires of our heart we could have if we just receive it by faith. Faith what? Based on what? Faith based on what God has already said. We've got, a, we've got a faith book. It's called the Bible. It's full of faith. Absolutely. And you put your eyes and your ears on the word of faith, and faith comes into your eyes and into your ears and down into your heart where you can use it. Yeah. And how do you get it out of you? Speak it. Speak it. Act on it. You act, act on, on it. it. You speak it. You don't say anything except what you want to come to pass. Ken and I don't say things that we don't want in our lives. Because that's the way faith works. Absolutely. And that's the way the curse works. You take bad stuff into your life and it's, it'll come in. Okay.
All right, we're talking about shalom, the peace that comes from being yes, whole. that's right. He has provided for us wholeness. Nothing missing. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Jesus said, I come to give you shalom, not as the world gives it. That's right. And we're going to talk about exactly how that That's came good. and exactly I like when that, that came. So, That's bless good. the Lord. Let's do it. Hallelujah. We're looking at the Old Testament now and where this word, a form of the word is used. That'll help you in your New Testament faith and believing if you see how it's used in the Old Testament place, especially when we're going to get to something in a minute about uh, money and payment. 1 Kings 7, 51 in the uh, Amplified says, all the work that King Solomon did on the house of the Lord was completed. So that's a form of shalem. Thus all the work, uh, Second Chronicles 5, 1, thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. But every one of these are a form of the word uh, shalem. Hmm. The, the root word, whole, complete. Oh. Now, it means be sound. The root word shalem means be sound, be uninjured. So here that word is used in Job. It means prosperity, wholeness of prosperity. Job 9.4. And this is Job answering one of his, uh, one of his you know, uh, accusers. And uh, he says, he's talking about God. He is wise in heart, mighty in strength. That's God. Whoever has hardened himself against God, has he mm. prospered? No. No. Why is that word prospered? No, no, no. That is the word in the, in the King James. I can't find where you That are. is the word. Uh, it's on uh, two, right here, in the book of Job. Okay. Half, has, he, uh, has he prospered? Mm -hmm. If you set yourself against God, and actually that word is, is from the root word shalem. Is he whole? No, you're not going to be whole. Nobody's going to be whole who sets himself against God. No. So that word for prosper. That's where, that's where you get the curse. That's where you're going to get the curse. You're not going to be having the blessings. You're going to be having the cursing. So if you come against oh, God, mercy. you're not going to be whole. When we begin to act, find out the word is true and we can take it and act on it way back in the, <laughs> way back, <laughs> uh, things begin to work for us. Absolutely. Where before we'd had just problems and debt and lack. So did you begin to be made whole? Yes. Did you begin to uh, have the blessing of uh, prosperity? Absolutely. It's and in the Word. We still have it. It's in the Word, Gloria. Yeah. It's in there. But Safety. you have to receive it. You have to receive That's the key. it. Yeah. Safety. And is you in have that to word. receive it. You have to know it. You have to hear it. Yes. You can't receive something you don't know. Gloria. So it's up to us. Let's take let's take this this idea. Okay. God may want you to be sick to teach you a great lesson. God wants you to be poverty stricken to teach you a great lesson. That's anti the word of God. Sure it is. That's anti the character of God. Anti the blessing. That's anti the blessing. Anti That's anti the, the goodness. That's anti the wholeness. That's right. And it says here in Job, if you set yourself against God, did you prosper? Mm -mm. Amplified translates it. Have you prospered or ever been safe? No. Anyone who did that? If you, if you, uh, you may not be old enough to, to remember, but if you're an adult, you remember when you didn't pay any attention to God, and you remember the problems you had, and you remember the bills you had, or if it wasn't financial, you remember the sicknesses that tried to dog your heels all the time. And, and it just, that's key. You've got to believe the Word of God, put it in your eyes and your ears, get it in your heart, and then there's still one more step. You start saying it with your mouth. I believe I've received the blessing. I believe I've received healing. I've received my healing. Somebody calls you on the phone and you answer and they want to know how you're doing. I believe I've received my healing. Are you feeling better? I believe I received my healing. You stay with that word. You do the same thing in prosperity and money. Because you know that God wants you well. Yeah. And God wants you prosperous. He wants you, W-H-O-L-E, whole. Mm -hmm. He wants you to know that he supplied it. And the only thing limiting it is your capacity to receive it. Right. But if you have in your head, what does it say in, in 1 John 1? 
they said, uh, John said, we walked with him. We touched him. We heard him. And we've got a message for you that you can have fellowship with God and with us. That's working together as partners. Mm -hmm. And here's the message. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And God is love. And God is love. And what does it say concerning goodness? Every good gift and every perfect gift comes, comes down from, from him, Father. from the Father of light. Yes. In whom there's no shadow of turning. That's right. He doesn't turn from the light. He doesn't turn from the light. He's all good. He wants you whole. He wants you, W-H-O-L-E, he wants you to have shalom. Complete. He wants you to have the peace that comes from being whole. Praise God. Now we're going to get down to this, how this uh, word is used in the Bible uh, as payment. Because on that word wheel that we showed you, the Shalom word wheel, we showed you that the word payment and the word to pay is uh, in, that, uh, in that word wheel. It's in the Shalom word wheel. Uh, now, we're going to see it here, how God set this forth. Maybe you don't like Leviticus. You don't like to have to read there. But if you're going to understand God's using of the word and God's uh, meaning of prosperity, it, you, you need to know these things. You need to know these are basic. These are fundamental forms of wholeness. That's why we study the Bible. We study the Bible to see what belongs to us and how to receive it into our lives. Absolutely. You know, a lot belongs to people, but they, they don't have any idea how to take it or receive it. And they don't even know it belongs to them. No, they don't know. You can't no. take it if you don't know it. No, you've got to know. So what do we, what's the cure? Get the word of God, sit yes. under teachers uh, that faith. know what they're talking Brother about. Brother Hagin used to say, uh, faith is concomitant with, with knowledge. It, it, it comes from knowing. It comes from knowing the oh. word, knowing what God. You sh absolutely cannot believe for something unless you think it's God's will for you. So here in the Old Testament, we're going to see that paying and payment has to do. Hmm. And this is in Leviticus 5. What right page? Here. Okay. Uh, Leviticus 5, 20 through 24. And I put this from the Art Scrolls edition. They say Hashem right here. They say Hashem when they mean um, Jehovah because they don't say Jehovah. They Hashem not, spoke they to don't Moses, speak that word, do they? Uh -uh, saying, If a person sins and commits a treachery against Hashem by lying to his comrade regarding a pledge or a loan or a robbery, or by defrauding a comrade, or if he found a lost item and denied it, and he swore falsely about any of the things that a person can do and sin thereby, so shall it be he'll be guilty. Let's go down to verse 24. Here's what he's supposed to do. If, if he lies about it, if he doesn't do right, it says in verse 24, or he stole something. Mm -hmm. About anything which he's sworn falsely, he shall repay its principal and add its fifth to it. He shall give it to its owner on the day he admits his guilt. That word repay is from the word uh, shalem, to pay. From wholeness. Now, would that be 20% interest? I, I guess it would, Gloria, add a fifth to it. Uh, I don't know if it means five times or over or probably add fifth, fifth to it. But you're going you're gonna to pay some interest because mm -hmm. of what you stole or what you lied about. Yeah. And, but you've got to repay it because why? If you don't repay it, you have left that man not whole. Not whole. Yeah, uh -huh. that's right. And uh, so uh, God's will is that men be whole. So uh, go down to here. I'm going to skip to there. Um, well, no, I won't either because this, this helps us right here. Uh, Leviticus 5.16, uh, King James Version says, He shall make amends for the harm. The antelope flight said he, he must make restitution mm -hmm. for what he's done and shall add a fifth to it. So I guess you're right. Oh, you 20%. add a fifth. Add a fifth to it. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't remember the add yeah, a fifth. Yeah, but 20% is what you, what you said. It was right. Your math is good, Miss Glow. Well, so, don't brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> he makes, you've you got to make the guy whole again. Plus, you're going to add more to him. You have to make him whole. That's the point. And uh, 2133, if a man shall open a pit and he digs it and he doesn't cover it, and another man's uh, an ox or donkey falls into it. The owner 
excuse me, shall make it good. And give money unto the owner of them. But the dead beast carcass shall be his. So this says you're going to make it good. And that make it good is pay. And it comes from the root word to make whole. And how are you going to do it? You're going to do it with money. Always that Old Testament has the idea of you got to pay to make the man whole again. you got to make restitution with his money, with his goods. Ecclesiastes 5.4. When you vow a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. So, uh, bless the Lord. I have some other things down here, and if you'll, if you'll send in for the notes, you'll get it. But I want to go back to that Shunammite woman. I want to go back to her. And we're going to, a Shunammite woman, we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 8. Now, you remember yesterday that we talked about this Shunammite woman, how she made a little room, a little prophet's chamber for Elisha the prophet. And he wanted to repay her, so he prophesied she's going to have a son. She had a son in a year, and then the son grew up, probably a teenager, working with his father in the uh, fields, gets sick in the fields, comes in, lays on her lap, and dies. So she gets, she tells her husband, I want the fastest transportation I can get. So she goes to Elisha, the son of, uh, the, the, the man of God, and he says, what's wrong? Find out what is the peace to his servant. Find out what is the peace of her husband. What is the peace of her? And every time she answers, King James says, it is well. But every time she answers, shalom. Nothing broken? She says what she wants, Gloria, not what she has. Yeah. She says what she wants, shalom. That's a good point. Now, we're going to go over to chapter 8. And now we're talking about repaying a loss. You, that man's a donkey falls into the pit you dug and you didn't cover it up, you're going to pay that man for that donkey. And it says money. You're going to make the man whole. You're going to make restitution. That means make whole. Yep. And, you're going to, and you're going to pay him. You're going to do it with money. So uh, here is this woman. Chapter 8. Then spoke Elisha unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life again, saying, Arise and go thou in thine household and sojourn. There is a famine. There's a famine that's going to be seven years and he tells the woman, the famine is coming. It's coming to uh, this land. He tells the Shunammite woman, but you go over to actually what's Gaza today. And you're going you're gonna to be kept there. So the woman goes over there for seven years, and she stays there. Now, as the end of seven years, this is chapter 8, verse 3. It came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her money and for her land. She wants back what she had yeah. before those seven years when she had to leave. So the king was talking, just happened to be talking, with Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. And he says, tell me, I pray thee, some of the great things, all the great things Elisha's done. And just as that servant was telling the king about Elisha raising this, this uh, woman's son. It came to pass as he was telling the king how Elisha had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life at that moment was crying to the king for her house and for her land. That was the very moment she said, I, I want my things back. And, uh, and, and Gehazi says, oh, king, this is the woman. And this is her son. Evidently, he was standing there with her whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the land since that day, everything that land produced since that day for seven years, that she left the land until now. So we see with this woman, the Shunammite woman, it was paid to her. She had to be made whole. That was in her covenant with God and God so arranged that when she goes back to that king and she asks for her lands back just so happened that Elisha's servant was there saying oh, you know one time the king said tell me all the great things he did well one time there was a woman and her son died and God raised him to life uh oh who's that I say that's her right there and that's a son with her and so she goes up to the king and she says I want my land back the king said, you got it, sister, and you got everything it produced since then. Because why? 
it says it made restitution. She was made whole. That's God's way. Yes. Now, we're going to remember this story because we're going to remember it when we talk about the woman with the issue of blood in the New Testament. Amen. You'll have to keep watching. Oh, yeah. Don't miss any of that. Praise God. 30 seconds. Where did the time go? Glory to God. We'll be back tomorrow with more. And uh, the more you know about the Bible, the freer you get because Scripture says you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. So you're not wasting your time when you spend time studying the Word of God. Get in a good church that preaches the Word. Learn all you can. Watch the broadcast. Glory to God every day. And grow up. Isn't that right, Billy? Oh, excellent. And life really gets good. The more you grow, the better it gets. We'll be right back. You can stay centered in peace no matter what's happening. God's perfect shalom is peace, wholeness, and everything good. God promises you peace. The Shalom Package reveals the difference between the world's definition of peace and God's plan for your complete wholeness and restoration. Receive life-changing insights with these powerful resources and teaching notes by Dr. Billy Brim. How the Hebrew Language Grew, a book by Edward Horowitz, reveals God's principle that all things grow from roots. Discover more about Hebrew root words such as shalom, amen, word and picture connections, and the wagon wheel of meanings. Shalom, the peace that comes from being whole, a mini book by Dr. Billy Grimm, helps you understand God's plan for your complete well-being. God's shalom for you is everything, healing, prosperity, and relationships. Nothing missing and nothing broken. Discover the shalom peace that comes from being whole. Order the shalom package for only $16.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Begin your journey of peace and restoration for every area of your life. Offer good for 60 days. If you are outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your local regional office for more information. God's will is prosperity in every area of your life, and it's a good thing. It's good. Through Jesus, he has provided everything that we need to be strong and to be well. And so we have some things for you to study. You know you have to get in the Word. If you don't get in the Word, you don't get faith. You can't just pray for faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's the only way you get it. Amen. Billy? Amen. And that's how you're going to get the wholeness that Jesus supplied. Yeah, the wholeness. We're yes. particularly going to look at that later in our study. Good. But the word shalom is the peace that comes from being whole. And we're calling this the shalom package. Good. And you're seeing how the Hebrew language works in this textbook, actually, a high school textbook. Uh, and you'll, you'll be able to glean, even if you're not a Hebrew speaker, you'll be able to glean some knowledge from this about root words especially. And then I wrote a little book on this, a little mini book on Shalom. And we have added to our Shalom package uh, just these notes that Gloria and I are sitting here every day and, and reading through and shuffling through. Uh, we're just going to put them in there and send them to you. So Good. You can that would be it. great. So order your Shalom package today. Shalom has a great message in it, mm -hmm. wonderful. Things that belong to you and me. You, just, you can get it on kcm.org, or you can call the office and order it. And uh, we want to pray for you today, for your shalom. Father, we pray for everybody listening today. We pray for the shalom peace of God to manifest God. in their lives. Their this bodies healed, their finances healed, their... Uh, children delivered and healed, whatever it is that would break their peace, we believe with them today for deliverance. Amen. And we know that faith works, and it takes Hallelujah. care of every situation. And so we give you praise. We agree with them that they are delivered, healed, whole, blessed. Yes. Bills paid in Jesus' name. If you need someone to pray the prayer of faith with you, and to pray in faith for you, call our prayer line. Our prayer ministers are trained in the Word. They know how to receive. 
they'll help you. They'll be blessed to help you and pray with you. Declare the promises of God over your situation all the time. If you want something like healing, you, you say healing scriptures for yourself all the time, just like you take medicine. When I was a kid, they used to give you Benadryl, just like we, they gave us Benadryl for sore throat, for a cold. Well, we know to take the medicine of God because it is a miracle drug. This is Glory and Billy reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Visit our website, kcm.org, to watch the broadcast or download the study notes free. You can also request a free copy of the broadcast on DVD, CD, or digital download. Shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Keep your faith strong in the Word and expect to see the manifestations of the Holy Ghost and fire. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. April 5th through 7th, the Copelands welcome you to the 2018 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. May 4th through 5th, register now for the Radiant Women's Conference at the Marriott Hotel and Golf Club in Fort Worth, Texas. May 18th through 19th, Kenneth Copeland invites you to the Peru Victory Campaign at Eduardo Nibos Coliseum in Avenida Aviación, Lima, Peru. For more information, go to kcm.org slash events. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. WABD. We are the Gulf Coast hit music station. Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. Recently involved in an accident or fall and experiencing pain? We're open four days a week, some days 7.30 to 7.30. Call me at 476-PAIN. One call, that's all, to me, chiropractor Dr. James Gordon of the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. The choice is yours. Hi, my name is Pastor Wayne Johnson, and we're here today, we're doing a teaching on the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I just want to welcome you to a word, a great teaching that we're going to expound and go into some scripture and kind of lay out a foundation that God want to reveal himself to us in a different way. And we're here in Walnut Hill where our church is, Emmanuel Faith Center. And I just want, I want to say thanks for joining us today, and, and I'm excited about what God is doing in these last days. So let's dig into the word of God. And so our foundational scriptures are, are going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start there. And also after that, we're going to go into um, uh, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost when the church came. And also we're going to go also in Isaiah 28 verses 12 and then John 7 and 38. And then we'll end up in uh, Psalms 103 verse 1 through 5. We, we may go a little bit different from those, but these are the foundational scriptures, and you can go back and you can look at them also, you know. And so here we are today, we're talking about the infilling of the Spirit. And so in the beginning, God, you know, gave us his word, 
in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians talking about the, the gifts of the Spirit, you know. And so I'm going to read uh, probably maybe down to the first 13 verses, and in, and in between that I may stop and talk a little bit. And so here, here we go. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Not concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by what? The Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation but it is the same God which what worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And so, I want to break there. So, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit. When we come into that place and the Spirit of God start moving, it's going to profit you. It's going to bless you. It's going to empower you to do some things and break some things and destroy some yokes in your life. So, so when we come to that place and we see the Spirit of God manifesting through prophecy, anytime the gifts of the Spirit in operation, we benefit. You know. And so, so, so here today, when we know that and we start looking for the plan and the perfect will of God to come forth in our life, it's just been a great blessing. Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, and to by the same Spirit is important. And so it's not three Holy Spirits, it's only what? One Spirit. And so we, as we understand that, it's only one Spirit, but yet still omnipresent, um, all-knowing God. And, and so he can do, he can, he's multitasking millions of things all at the same time because what he he is the great and almighty god and verse nine to another faith by the same spirit and to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit and to another the working of miracles uh to the another working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongue to another interpretation of tongue and so i ask you a question so if god can fill me with the spirit that i pray in tongues which is one of the gifts of the spirit that's that's listed here in first Corinthians chapter 12 so why shouldn't all the other gifts be allowed to be in the church glory be to God or be a uh, manifestation come because verse verse 1 said now concerning spiritual gifts brother I would not have you ignorant and so he said he told us to desire these gifts to crave these gifts to pray and ask God for the gifts to be alive in the church glory be to God and so when we do that, we release our faith in the ability that when we pray that we know that our Heavenly Father has what hurt us. And so when we go to Matthew chapter 6, he's talking about the Lord's Prayer. And when we pray in secret, our Father who sees in secret will reward us what openly. And so we see that, 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 that the Lord's Prayer is a very powerful prayer when you go in and you see it. Now you begin to pray from that standpoint of understanding that when we ask God for something, he's not trying to withhold anything from us because we are his seed. We are, the, we are his children. We are the seed of Abraham. And so God wants to empower us to be a blessing to our generation. Because when people are blessed by the gifts and by the power of the Holy Spirit, what's, what, what's, what's the results of it? They want to run toward God. They want to release and give their lives to Christ, glory be to God, that they can live what the abundant life that God what already promised his children. But then I, I begin to ask the question, why is it not given? Why is it so that, we, that some gifts are harder to walk in than others? And, and so that's my prayer to God, that, that the eyes of our understanding will become open, that we can understand how to receive the blessing of God. Salvation and, and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know, and so so power is in the blessings of the Lord. And so anytime the Lord told me he would profit me and increase me and bless me, glory to God, that means there's power in his word to do exactly what he said. And so my job is to believe what I read, not rationalize it, not try to say what if or and, and not understanding full measure of what he's trying to relate to the church and, and and so when we put that if in there and we disqualify ourselves as being a recipient or, or the receiving the blessing of God it calls us to stumble and fall glory be to God does that make sense and so here today that we know that it's the self same spirit one spirit and and, and so we have so many 
spirits that's trying to gain access to our lives, but they don't, but they are disembodied spirits. They're not what here legally, so therefore they're trying to gain access to our lives and to all that we have, you know. And so we, we, we disfranchise ourselves. We, we push them aside in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And so hereby we know that, that we have access with God because it, it's by the Holy Spirit. It's only one. 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 One, one, one. And so here we are. Let me go back to verse 11. But all these work of that one and self same spirit, divided to every man severally as he will. And they call him in the Greek Alos Paracletus. I, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, you know. And so he's our advocate, he's our helper, he's our standby, he's our intercessor. And, jo and John was said this when, when he had his earthly ministry. He said, There's 